many reins do you have when you're riding dressage? Two, right? What if I said, maybe not. What if I said, look at it as one rein, and if you do, you can increase your score by percent after percent after percent. Does that sound cool to you? Keep watching, I'm gonna fill you in with all of the details. Hey, riding superstars! <laughs> Guys, this is probably one of the biggest aha moments I had in my sport. When I stopped seeing my two individual reins, my left rein and my right rein, as a left rein and right rein. When I started to see them as one big thing, all of a sudden, my horse became more upright, I had more control, and that power steering, self-carriage effect really, really, really kicked in. So let me talk you through this. What I want you to do is imagine your horse's bridle. There's a bit that goes through their mouth, your reins attached to either side, and then those reins ultimately attach to your hands and then so on. So let's go from the left-hand side here. Imagine if you started your rein from the inside corner of his left mouth. Well, actually, let's say, let's change that, to the very, very center of his tongue inside his mouth. And the rein starts from there, it goes out the side of his mouth to the ring, connects onto the rein, comes up the rein, your hand, your lower arm into your elbow is still a part of that rein. It then comes up your body where your upper arm and your torso are somewhat one, your scapula or your shoulder blades, it comes across there as well and that's also one. Back down through your upper arm which is also part of your torso, out the elbow, and then again from the elbow it becomes a rein again, into through the hand, into the actual rein, through the bridle, back to the middle of the bit. You following that? Yeah? Yeah? From that, you understand that what you do over here has a direct effect to what you do over here. So whenever you move your reins, you need to understand that what you're trying to do is improve your horse's center of balance, improve your horse's immediate straightness, and improve the evenness to which his body moves between those two reins. All of a sudden, when you think of your lower arm up to the elbow as your rein, you stop grabbing it with your hands. You stop thinking, I need to sponge my hands. I need to move, I need to um, move my fingers. I'm not saying you don't need to do that, but it doesn't stop at your hand. The softness needs to come all the way through the lower part of your arm as well. Your strength or your stability comes from your back, your core, your upper arm as being part of that, not independently as your bicep. When you start to think of your reins like that, it's very hard to do all those things that you do that are wrong. For example, crouch down and pull. Try pulling while trying to keep not a kink in your, from the rein to your arm. Try to do that. It's almost not possible. Try to think about opening your reins this far to get them to turn around a corner, which you would know in TSMG isn't going to help you in dressage. Right? You can't. You can't stay like this while doing things like that. Thinking about your whole horse as, or your rein contact with your horse as one big piece, not two little pieces, or even one here, one here, then your arms, then your shoulders, then your back. It's all one big thing. The more you think about it like that, the more influence you have in a correct, methodical, continuous snowballing way to get your ultimate goal, which is get your horse with more even weight in all four legs and much more upright. How cool is that? It's pretty amazing, right? Write in the comments below how this might have helped you in an example. When you were turning a circle, when you're riding a shoulder in, 
talk about a time when this knowledge may have made your life easier.